Welcome to a Code Report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to problem two from the Hacker Rank Hour Rank 31 contest entitled Save the Queen. The problem states the kingdom of Zakoria is under attack. The invaders wish to capture the queen and conquer Zakoria. Aware of the danger, Heldorf, the captain of the Zakorian army, must devise an exit strategy for the queen. In order to do so, the invaders must be kept at bay for a period of time. There are N invaders who must be engaged in fight for as long as possible. The army has K soldiers, with each having the capability to fight for a total of AI seconds. The soldiers can fight against any invader at any time, i.e. they can move to fight with another invader by dropping the current fight. Heldorf wants you to find out how long does he have to help the queen escape. You have to find the maximum possible time for which all the N invaders must be kept busy. And the constraints for this problem are that N is going to be greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to K, and K is going to be less than or equal to 10 to the 4th. And the total time for which each soldier uh, can fight AI lies between 1 and 10 to the 6th. So let's take a look at one of the two examples that HackerRank uh, provided us with. So here is our input. We have two numbers on the first line, n and k. The first number is n, which is the number of invaders, and the second number is k, the number of soldiers that the Zakorian army has. And on the second line, we have the k numbers, which represent the amount of time that each of the k soldiers, respectively, are able to fight for. And for the purposes of this problem, I'm going to be changing 100 to 40, because it's going to make this easier to visualize. Uh, because if we have 100, it's going to be a big, tall column here, whereas 40 is a little bit easier to compare to 10 and 15. And if we visualize this, it looks as follows. So you can see here, I've sort of grouped these uh, into three soldiers, the ones with the largest amount of time, and then one soldier off to the side. So, uh, And on top of this, I've also sorted them in decreasing order. And so that's going to be the first part of this problem, is to decrease or is to sort your soldiers uh, by the amount of time they're able to fight in decreasing order, and then to take the first n of them that are going to fight the invaders and to put them in a list. And uh, the reason we want to do this is because um, if you're able to jump in between, uh, that's great. But it's easier to be jumping in between if you're a soldier that has less time because when you have more time, you can just focus all of your time on a single uh, invader. And uh, then the extra soldiers can focus on the soldiers uh, that are currently fighting but have um, less time and so they might run out compared to the ones with the most. So we always want the ones with the greatest amount uh, fighting at the front line to begin with. Hopefully that's intuitive. Uh, but then how do we figure out the maximum amount of time that across all the soldiers will be able to keep the N invaders at bay? And what we end up wanting to find is the following. We sort of want to take uh, the total amount of extra soldier time that we have and we want to figure out a way to distribute it across our current fighting soldiers such that we achieve our maximum value. And if you can see here, uh, this is going to lead to 17.5 and that is going to be the answer uh, for this problem. And it's not entirely clear how we get to this, um, but what it's going to involve basically is try to imagine that we've separated uh, the first N of our soldiers into the front lines, and we'll call these soldiers uh, the soldiers that are on the front line, and then we have soldiers that are off. In this case, it's only one, but it will work for any number of soldiers that are off. And basically, if you think of it sort of, I visualize this as like liquid, and then you want to pour uh, this liquid onto your soldiers such that you help out the one with the least time first, uh, then the second one, so once you've sort of matched the second one, you're going to start pouring up to here, and then you're going to continue to do this until you have no more sort of extra soldier liquid to pour. Um, and even though, right, like the way this is visualized here, um, this soldier can't be fighting in two places at once, you could easily swap the blue and the green here so that, uh, you know, the extra soldier starts uh, fighting first, and then the blue one takes over, and then the green one goes to help out the yellow one once it gets its time exhausted. So that has sorted itself out. So basically, it's this pouring mechanism where you are trying to uh, help out the weakest soldier that's currently fighting and then move on to the next one. 
And uh, once we have figured out that this is what we want to do, we just need to uh, implement an algorithm. And the way we're going to do that is we are going to uh, start with our extra amount here, and then we're basically going to try distributing all of the liquid per se over all three of these elements. And um, instead of just distributing the liquid, we're basically just going to sum up all of our soldiers on the field and off the field. And if we try to do that at first, we're going to get the following. Um, we're going to end up with an average of 25 across these three soldiers. Um, but this isn't going to work because uh, this red soldier here, by the time we hit time 17.5, uh, this soldier can only be in one place at one time. It can't be in all three of these places. And the mechanism that we're going to use for checking this is to basically see, once we've calculated this average 25, so basically the sum of the soldiers that we're looking at on the field plus the sum off the field, if this is less than the maximum element in our um, list of soldiers on the field, we know we've met our condition. But in this case, the maximum was 40 and the average here is 25. So we want this number to be greater than the maximum. Uh, so if we go back to the beginning and the next thing we'll do, because we know it didn't work for all three of these soldiers, if we remove the largest soldier and then try pouring this sort of extra soldier liquid onto these two, we end up with what we had before. Um, and in this case, our average is going to be 17.5, and the maximum soldier on the field at this point is going to be 15. So because we've met that condition, we know we've solved our problem. And you can imagine for a slightly different problem, if we change this 15 to 30, uh, it's going to look as follows. So now at this point, uh, our extra soldier didn't need to help out the second yellow soldier. All of uh, the extra soldier's um, time capacity went to the third uh, soldier, the blue soldier. So this is the result of this problem is going to be 20. So you can, if you can try and visualize it that way, as you're taking this sort of extra time capacity and then pouring it over all of your sorted soldiers on the field, the sorted ones that have the greatest time, and you want to keep on pouring until uh, you've maximally poured out. So in this case, it'll get to 20. In the previous case, it'll get to 17.5, and it's pretty straightforward. Um, Hopefully that makes sense, and now we're going to take a look at our code. So we're starting with the Python solution because it is uh, slightly clearer to read, I think, and also less efficient. So we'll take a look at a more, more efficient solution when we look at the C++ solution. But uh, here's our solve function. Interest interestingly, uh, they didn't give us k, but you can just find that by getting the length of a. And so we have n soldiers, and then a is our uh, list of soldiers. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to sort our list a in reverse order. And then we want to split um, our list into uh, the soldiers that are going to be on the field. So we take the first n soldiers and put that in a list on. And then for off, we actually don't need to put these into a list. We can just take the total sum, because that's all we care about when calculating the average. And then once we've gotten on, which is our list, and off, which is a sum of all the soldiers off the field, we just have a while loop here. So we're, we're looping while uh, we still have soldiers in our uh, front line, if you will, in this list. And the average of the soldiers uh, in our front line and off the field divided by the length of um, our soldiers that are currently still on the front line, length of A, as long as this is greater than our maximum individual on our front line, we know we need to keep on sort of popping off until we're able to fill up uh, or our liquid time uh, properly. And then while this isn't being satisfied, so while the average is less than our maximum, we want to remove the first element, which is currently the greatest uh, soldier in terms of time capacity or time capability um, from that list. And the average function here each time sums up uh, the soldiers that are in our front line. And so once we've finished looping, we know we have hit the condition where average is greater than or equal to our maximum, and then we can just output this. So this is not the most efficient because for each call to average, we are uh, summing up all the elements in our list. So this is going to be a linear operation. And our while loop here is going to be linear, um, bounded by the same uh, boundary uh, due to the fact that we're going to be iterating up to a maximum possible of uh, n. And 
that makes this a quadratic solution. So a more efficient way to do this is instead of each time we make a call to this average function, uh, we just have a sum pre-computed and then we can just, each time we remove an element, instead of popping it off of our list, we can just have an index and then we can subtract the amount of that uh, soldier that we just removed from our sum. So in the C++ solution we do that, so let's take a look. So this code is a little bit more cumbersome because we don't have a nice sum function. We have accumulate instead of sum, which requires iterators to be passed to it. Uh, but other, other than that, it's pretty similar. So first line, same thing. We're just sorting uh, in reverse. That's what the greater um, the greater predicate here is for, or comparator here is for, I should say. Um, then in the next two lines, we're calculating both the sum uh, for our for our soldiers that are on the front line versus off the front line. Um, making two calls to accumulate. Then we have our index, which is just an integer, and then we have our lambda here instead of a function which we had in our Python solution, but they do the exact same thing. Note here we're just uh, returning off plus on divided by n minus i, so the index. So at first we're going to be considering all of the elements as i will, or all of the soldiers as i will be equal to zero, uh, but as we start uh, iterating i will grow and this number will get smaller. And then we have the same condition while average is less than uh, a i and i is less than n. So what this is saying is that the, the current greatest element we know is the element that our index currently points at and uh, this is the same condition and then i less than n is the same thing as uh, there still being soldiers on the front line. And so while this is still not the case we want to subtract the current greatest soldier on our front line and then increment our index. and uh, a little bit more verbose in terms of outputting to the correct number of decimals. Um, but yeah, that is our C++ solution. And due to the fact that our lambda here, uh, which is the equivalent of our Python function, is not summing up all the time capacities of the soldiers and it's only doing a constant time operation, the time complexity of this solution is going to be linear. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.